afternoon, everyone. My name is Jen Underwood. I'm a data platform technology specialist with Microsoft. I cover enterprise accounts. Today, we're going to be talking about mobile business intelligence, extending SharePoint to all different devices, and a variety of techniques to do this. Um, so we're not just only going to be covering SharePoint here. We're also going to be covering um, some of the techniques because of the word all. I did not have an opportunity to name the session. And when I was given all devices, that's a whole other ball game. Um, so we'll be talking about the most popular devices as well as um, some of the older devices to, you know, to check off the word all so that we've covered a variety of different areas. Can I get a feeling in here for the audience type? Because really, we're, we could be touching a wide variety of audiences here. Can I get an idea for who is a SharePoint developer in here? OK. Who would be consider themselves more of a classic business intelligence type person? Fabulous, OK. And then any .NET developers here? Oh, awesome. Great. So some of the content that I have today, I'm going to show you some of the difficult stuff first, and not even too difficult, because some of these frameworks have already been developed for you. Um, then we're going to do easy button things. So if you do get, uh, you see some code, there is some code. This is a 300 level. Um, but I just want you to understand, as engineers, how the solution actually works that you, when you implement somebody's mobile framework. So I'm going to open today with uh, Mobile BI. Now, Microsoft does not package Mobile BI. Um, and in this case, I'm using a pizza box and a, a packaged pizza. So you think about applications in an app store. You know, somebody's already shrink-wrapped it for you. And there's not a whole lot of customization that you can do with this. Um, but you clearly understand, oh, OK, it's an app in an app store, and I have uh, Mobile BI. OK. Well, where's Microsoft's Mobile BI? Oh, we, don't, uh, we just don't happen to label it that, but I'll be showing that in a moment. So one of the things to think about, too, is when you do have Mobile BI, it's already packaged up for you. Um, you can't always do whatever you want to do. Some of the app stores take months to get your applications and application changes approved when you distribute it out and package it up. So one of the beauties in Microsoft's offering is that you can really make whatever you want. You can customize it. I work with a lot of enterprise accounts that have um, special uh, compliance requirements, auditing requirements. Um, and in that case, they are able to extend with the platform or the framework that Microsoft offers. So our mobile BI, we don't label it nicely like other folks do, so people don't even realize that we have this, um, is a combination of using our platform of HTML5, what's well, called cascading style sheet media queries to change displays to target different devices, and some of the SharePoint business intelligence, some of the easy button things I'll be showing today are out of the box with what we had a cumulative update last December. That Again, we didn't necessarily market that we had this update, um, but it is enabling folks to do mobile business intelligence. So I'm going to talk about is the mobile BI journey market, the Microsoft's vision and roadmap. Um, and mobile, device, uh, mobile BI on a variety of different devices today and some third-party options as well. And with me, I have, I have a Windows tablet. It's a Samsung. I have, yes, I have an iPad with me today. I have Windows Phone. I have a Kindle Fire. I also have some emulators that I'll be using on the screen as well. So you'll get a flavor for a bunch of different uh, devices that I have. I would ask that you try to hold back on some of the questions towards the end, and I'll also be staying at the booth afterwards so that you can come. I have a zillion demos that I want to show as many as possible today. So just a walk down memory lane. Uh, if you take a look back in the early 90s, we had things like pagers, the Palm Pilot. Um, you know, we could technically call, if I have to check that box of saying all devices, if some of the you know some of the foreign countries around the world or all the, the different countries around the world, not everybody has a smartphone. You know they may have some of those older devices from back in the day. And technically, in SharePoint, in a list, you can do a, an SMS alert on any changes. So if you need to deliver to some of those devices, you could indeed use some alerting mechanism, or you could even use some kind of text mechanism um, text mechanism uh, for some of those devices. In the later 2000s, Blackberries came out, and that's really when email became popular on some of the different device types. Um, then in 2007, iPhone, in 2008, iPad, that really re-energized and revitalized the, the marketplace for different devices and business usage. Um, 
We also have, it's the Windows Suite, sometimes you'll call it Slate, sometimes you call it Tablet. We have a bunch of different vendors now in the marketplace. And with the Windows 8 Wave release, you'll see Microsoft really making a much bigger presence in the, the mobile device market. So just a pop quiz really quick. What percentage of BI functionality do you guys feel would be predicted by Gartner? And Gartner is one of the four, uh, you know, forward-thinking research groups. Um, what do you think will be consumed by mobile devices in like seven months from now, in 2013? Would that be less than 10%? Can I get a feeling? Less than 10? Okay. 10 to 30%? Okay. 31 to 50? Ah, uh, and over 50. And the answer is, ta -da, 31 to 50 percent. And typically, when I ask folks, and it depends where I've, I've given this presentation a few times, a different different flavors. Usually, we're still in early adopter mode. I only have a handful of folks that have really rolled this out. Are there folks already mobile, mobilizing today that have mobile BI? Can I get a feeling for? Ah, okay, still early adopter. We're still very early adopter in this marketplace, folks. But it's going to be huge. And when I say it's going to be huge, why do we care about this now? Again, we've had these devices forever. I played with a pocket PC, and I was developing applications with SQL Server CE 10, 12 years ago. Um, because now, there's over 100% year-over-year growth. That's humongous. You cannot dismiss that. Um, this is more than just a fad. This is a true trend. This is a a true change and movement in the industry itself. And if we look at, I'm not naive, I, I certainly see what's going on. If you look at the current device breakdown, and I've see, I see the folks here with, with iPads uh, and iPhones and whatnot, right now it's about 68% of the market or from a shipments perspective. Um, if we look at some of the other tablets, so Windows, uh, the Windows tablets are about Windows phones, 15%, and then all the others. So again, when I start talking about the easy button, options that you have to do this. I'm going to be talking about some of the, the devices that are more popular, not necessarily some cryptic device with Opera Mini. And, and I'm not going to focus a lot of my time and attention there. So Mobile BI Overview. Basically, what is Mobile BI? It's, it's the ability to deliver information anytime, anywhere, again, any device. And any device, that's, you know, I'm technical, so that really bothers me. Uh, smart devices for the most part, or at least being able to get a text message. Um, so what are, what are these types of information? We're talking about proactive alerting, triggered distribution. Uh, one of the use cases I see a lot is you know, inventory shortages, just getting a feeling for demand, staffing, being more proactive, even putting predictive analytics to, to be more forward thinking. Um, pushing out reports, so we've been doing this, right? Reporting services has scheduled distribution of reports. You can push them out to PDFs for some of the various scenarios and some of those phones that aren't really sophisticated. You could still do that today. The types of users, so now I do have quite a few accounts that are actually deploying this today. They're in retail, they're in supply chain, and also utilities and insurance. Um, so the types of people that typically are rolling this out, CIOs, usually are the ones doing the piloting. They usually have the fanciest widget, and they want to see their BI, uh, which, which incorporates scorecards, KPIs, you know, kind of an overview glance on, on their cool devices. Uh, I also see it with salespeople. That's the, the next biggest audience. And then field service personnel. And when, I, when, I, when reviewing different accounts and who's doing what with mobile, um, what I learned was even some, some accounts, they've been doing this for years with regards to insurance adjusters, guys that uh, climb up telephone poles. They've been using you know, information on their devices for many, many years. So these guys are forward thinking. So what do people want? Now, I, I do get caught up. I talk to a lot of groups. And, well, I want this. I want that. I want this. I want, we need to have that. Need to, what are we really trying to accomplish here? And what is realistic? So keep in mind these tiny screens. What is truly realistic that you're going to do? You are not going to do a whole lot of editing. You're not going to do a whole lot of detailed analysis on a teeny tiny screen. So in reality, what we're looking at from a mobile BI perspective is delivering real-time views with some drill down analysis. We're talking about alerting. We're talking about KPI monitoring, minimal clicking. So we don't want folks having to, to, to tap around too much. They'll get frustrated and abandon the whole solution. Uh, we do think it's important to have savings of the views and commenting. So if there is a problem, you, you want to be able to, to note that problem and have somebody take an action on it. 
So some of the nice to have, I'll be showing some mapping today, but that's, that's a nice to have that's not truly a need. Development, so this is where we're gonna focus most of our attention today is uh, some of the development and then also showing you how you can roll out with, um, with SharePoint BI fairly easily. So from a development perspective, I am not gonna focus on native application with Objective-C and, and all the different, when I talk about native applications, uh, Java and working in these different languages, native operating type. Again, uh, that is something that's very complex. It is beyond the scope of this. And you don't really need to do that. There's some arguments at you know, two or four native applications. When you start looking at uh, the whole picture, what Microsoft has today, what um, makes sense for a lot of folks today is, is leveraging the smartphone browsers. So we're going to be focused on the web browser itself, talking about SharePoint, um, some ASP.NET showing you media queries, jQuery, Sencha Touch, and some of those similar type of frameworks that have been developed for you that you can put into your environment. Keep in mind that tablets um, are not necessarily designed for business usage. Usually it's for consumer usage. And a great example would be uh, the iPad that has a VGA connector and it never, ever works. Um, you know, you just don't have that with some of the other types of devices that are devised for, for business use, like my laptop here today. Um, the screen sizes, changing views, the soft keyboards that pop up all the time, it's more for an entertainment, playing games. Um, so keep that in mind as you're developing, there's gonna be some nuances. Some other nuances that to keep in mind are online and offline and different wireless performance levels. So even to prepare for today's session, I had to make sure that I had decent enough wireless so that I can show you things live and I have a backup of a video for each one of my demos just in case the wireless here was overwhelmed with traffic. For testing these, it's a whole other ball game. So I'm gonna show you some emulators. Um, there's also some other services that folks can use. If you're truly developing a mobile application and you want to distribute it worldwide, there's a good chance you're not gonna have all the devices that are distributed around the world yourself. You just, there's no way you could afford to have all those devices. There is a service, um, it's called Device Anywhere, that you can rent time on these different devices, so that's fairly interesting. Um, some other things from a device and testing standpoint um, are device detection, and this has been around our web Peers have been doing this for a long, long time, detecting what device you're coming from, um, also detecting browser capabilities. So this is pretty mature, that particular type of uh, functionality. What isn't necessarily mature is our ability as BI pros to apply some of these different uh, thought processes. So some things to think about when you're designing, it's gonna be a little different than designing uh, for consumption on a desktop or a laptop. You're really gonna wanna think about user interface, you're gonna wanna think about scrolling, uh, parameters seem to be an issue on many, many devices. So they take up the screen, they, um, some of them display funny looking. Uh, one of my tricks and tips for using parameters is to use them as clickable links. So plain hyperlinks, if you have kind of embedded the parameters in there, work really well on different devices. And just expect many different levels of performance. So not even just with the wireless, but the devices themselves um, come in a wide variety of uh, performance. Security. Security is the number one concern. So I talked to a lot of different groups about this. I'm part of a group that's researching this particular market and environment. And one of the biggest concerns in accounts is uh, that mobile devices get lost and stolen. And that certainly happens. They're small, they're easy to grab, um, and, and that happens. So securing data at rest on the device is fairly important. If you are keeping data offline, a lot of the different vendors uh, have an API that you can use for encrypting it to automatically have that data on the device expire after a certain amount of time. So those are things that the manufacturer of the actual device can offer to do some of the production. Another thing to keep in mind is Windows authentication. So for you guys, I think this is gonna be the biggest one because for me, this is the biggest one when doing some of the mobile web development on these different devices. Some of the browsers have this already within them, the ability to authenticate to the systems. Other ones do not. And an example might be the Google, the, the Android operating system doesn't by default always have a browser in there that supports authentication. And to work around that, what you can do is go to the app store in these different devices and look for another replacement browser that does have authentication capabilities within that browser type so that you can securely um, deliver this information. So some best practices, don't display too much information on the screen. I don't know how many BI uh, performance tuning projects I've been assigned to in the past, and I come and I look at and I get, oh, the reports are really, really slow. And I look on the screen and there's like 50 zillion reports and charts, and I'm like, oh my gosh, well this is like 100 reports on one. 
you absolutely need to rethink that. So I know Jen Stirrup mentioned uh, Tuft and, and Few, Steve and Few, and those best practices of information design within your dashboards. You want to do this with mobile as well and, and really narrow it down and get rid of those crazy ones. Uh, one of the tips to think about if you're, you're delivering to iPads, that Safari browser only supports scalable vector graphic fonts. So if you don't use things like Arial or Verdana type fonts, you may end up with a Times New Roman. So some of your graphic designers, you'll want to take a look at what fonts they're using so that you're really getting the look and feel that you think you're going to get. So Microsoft's mobile BI roadmap. There is no new information that I'm providing today with the exception of some tips and tricks of what folks are doing in the field. So there are no new announcements today. I can't make that more clear. Um, we have promised at PASS last fall that we would ensure our corporate BI web-based solutions would work across the iOS, which is the, the iPads and the Safaris, as well as the Windows devices. And we did deliver in December of 2011. It's the SharePoint Cumulative Update 1. And that's a big deal. If you have SharePoint 2010 and you want to do some of the things I'm going to be showing you today, it's really important that you apply that cumulative update. And I have some folks that tell me, well, we don't apply a cumulative update, we wait for a full-blown service pack. Folks, Microsoft is releasing features in these cumulative updates. If you want to keep enhancing your mobile BI, you'll want to apply that mobile update. So looking forward into the second half of this calendar year, we're probably going to be adding Android. So this is not news, um, new information, but this is what the, we'd already said at the past announcement. And then into the Windows 8 wave, we're really going to be working on the whole touch base experience con continuing to improve. And we're committed to this particular roadmap. So SharePoint Mobile, out of the box, SharePoint does have mobile capabilities. And I will be the first to fess up that I'm not crazy about it. Um, I think it's a little ugly, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, but it does, have, it does have mobile capabilities out of the box for many, many device types. And there's a, a browser compatibility and detection configuration file that will show you all the different device types that can be supported in here. So just to get a feeling for what was, re what was released in the cumulative update, what will work for your SharePoint BI will be your Business Intelligence Center sites. Those are your dashboard sites using Performance Point, that right-clicking functionality, slicing, dicing. I have a fantastic demo from one of my peers that I'll be showing on that. So that will work. What won't work is creating in the, the ClickOnce application, that dashboard designer. That is not mobile device friendly. Um, so things that will work will also be Excel services. So believe it or not, Power Pivot and Excel services work phenomenally across many devices. Um, things like the Nook that from Barnes & Noble, a really kind of a, a, a operating system that's fairly limited in nature, works with, with Excel services. And that one seems to be the one when I look at who's deploying what in the field, the Excel services is by far the most popular way to distribute some of the dashboards within SharePoint today. Reporting services reports. So this is a sticky area. So technically, officially, reporting services is not necessarily supported. However, a lot of times it works. And that's what I'll be showing you is you know, some of these things work. Um, the other thing that you can do with this is you can work it around with MobiWeave. It's a third party application. So from a SharePoint mobile perspective, um, we have mobile views out of the box and a browser definition file. And the browser definition file, I'll show that in a moment, allows you to go ahead and redirect. Um, you can detect the browser type. Maybe you detect uh, it's an iPhone. You can detect, you can defer it to a different subsite. And that is one of the better practices. So one of the better practices is actually to disable the mobile lists in SharePoint and use it's called an HTTP, HTTP module and redirect to a customized mobile-friendly site. And there is a fellow, his name is Kyle Schaefer, and he has made an HTML5 friendly master page that you can leverage. Now, it's more for viewing and not for collaboration, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment, but that is one of the better practices to do. There's some other things that you can do to enhance the base platform. For instance, you can leverage J the jQuery framework to be more touch friendly. You can also use Sentia Touch, and I know Sentia Touch was at this uh, conference today. That works really well with Office 365 to really enhance that and make that more mobile friendly. 
Some other third-party options, um, I've reviewed quite a few third-party business intelligence mobile vendors. And the one that works really well with SharePoint is a general framework across many devices, including your um, things like the mobile Razor phone or the BlackBerry. It's a company called Mobile Entree. And they are the only ones so far that I've noticed, ex uh, Mobile Entree and Extended Results, that works across a wide variety of mobile devices, but they also have BI mobile friendly for all these devices. So when I talk about the easy button solutions in a moment that cover that 70% and you're really looking to still cover that, that last 30%, some of these third parties may be able to help you if you're dealing with that across the world. So the device optimized master page. This is available now and I have another partner of mine in Telenet that's already doing this and using this uh, for their devices here and as you move the screen the, the size and the placement of the menus will shift. And this is what I'm going to show you how to do. And I talked about um, having it be kind of, I'm going to show you the hard stuff and scare you first, and then I'm going to show you all the easy things. Um, I'm going to show you this framework so you understand how it works. Um, even though you don't have to code this yourself, unless you want to code this yourself, I want to show it to you so you understand the underlying technologies, being technical professionals and engineers that we are. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you some of the, some of the responsive designs. So let's start here. We're going to start with my, with my iPad and hopefully I've got my, yep, looks good. So basically what I have here is a layout that I have. It's a regular HTML type layout. It has, um, some of the what we call cascading style sheet media queries apply so that if I twist it, and hopefully let's go all the way around. So this is one of the joys. We talk about these not being, come on. There we go. If you twist it enough. Um, now you'll notice the bars here are much skinnier than they were before. And there's the layout's been made thinner. And that was dynamically, and that's happening actually in the, uh, responsive design as well. So let's take a peek at yet another tiny device here and take a look at what the same type of design looks like. So in this device, let's put it right on top of each other here, on this device you can see that same menu now, training, user reports. If I slick down, it's now really skinny. And if I flick this one to the side, now I've got wider bars, and I have my, my menu across the top. So I'm using media queries to dynamically display this information, and that works across multiple device types. There's another way that I could do this as well, and this is really common uh, when I talk about the jQuery framework. show another way to do the same thing. We'll get both going. So jQuery happens to have, let's see, we got this really small list here. And we'll go to this one here. Has that same capability. Let's move this guy over. So again, I can dynamically shift and display and it will squeeze. And this looks like a traditional, the jQuery looks more like a traditional mobile application. And what to note here is this also has this automatic filtering. So if I want to do things like maybe just look for my Excel reports, I can take a, a quick look and that filter is built in automatically. So now I'm going to show you the back end of how easy this, scary easy this was to do. Even though I know there's code, this code has been developed for you already. So let's take a peek at how I got that to, got that to work. So the first thing I did, the first thing I want to show is this mobile uh, BI demo, this responsive design that I did. And in this case here, what I really want to point out are a few different things. Now this could be, you could also design it in Visual Studio or any of the other designers. This just happens to be for pure HTML, my favorite designer. Um, so what I want to really point out here right away is this is what's key. If you do nothing else for your mobile device users, at least set your meta tag to, to be this scale one device width. Um, it's called a viewport. 
to allow the viewport will automatically scale if you do nothing else um, so that it will help you. When I talk about some of this, these frameworks in the code here, this is what I'm talking about, is including it's a JavaScript framework library. And this has been uh, created for you. There's several different. We have the jQuery. We have Sentia Touch. Um, these have been developed for you. And then to get this to, to go ahead and dynamically size, what's going to be key in these particular ones is having style sheets that show this. And I'll show that in SharePoint so you guys know what I mean by that. And then the other thing I did here is simply the rest of it should be fairly straightforward. Really, I just have a list here. Uh, one of the things I have in the list to do that, that search, there's no code to that search, by the way. That's all in the background. Um, to do that, finding that Excel, all I had to do was put data filter true. And that does that filtering of everything automatically for you. Um, so again, it looks scary, very easy. And the rest of it is just hyperlinks to different reports. Um, and that's how I achieved that particular one. If I look at SharePoint and how do you apply this in SharePoint using Kyle's, um, Kyle Schaefer's master page. And this is available to everybody in here. This code is uh, not secret or anything. You can certainly be using this today. So the first thing you'll want to do when you download is the zip file that Kyle provides that you can put into your SharePoint 2010 site is you're going to want to go ahead and copy this into um, the root of your site into your style library. And if you take a look here, I've got style library. And then all I did was copy over the V5 CS, CSS into the V5 folder. And that's how you apply the style sheets that have media queries in them. So I've been talking about media queries, but I haven't really shown what I mean by that. So let's go ahead and take a peek at uh, what a media query actually is. So this is an example here of a media query. This is how you can dynamically size layouts on the fly. And this has been done all for you by Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. And you can certainly customize this as well. Um, but what it will do is it, a media query in cascading style sheets will take a look at your device capabilities, how wide the screen is, and then dynamically display the information and apply the styles to, so that it fits correctly on the screen for that particular media type. Um, so that's how this is dynamically sizing for me. The other thing that you would do to use Kyle's framework is then apply it to a master page. So again, Kyle provides you the master page. You would go into your mobile-friendly site. I have my mobile-friendly site here. And now I have the master page. And in my master page, you will also see, again, I'm using the viewport here so that I can get this scaling properly of the SharePoint site to, to my mobile device. So this has been designed all for you. And then once you have this in place, all the folks that want the easy button solution, now it's easy button from here on out. So that was the scary part. So moving on. The next area that, um, and I, I've, already, I've already confessed to this, that's really fairly mobile device friendly is Excel and Excel services. Um, it is covered, indeed, so you're officially supported via the, the SharePoint, 2010, or 20, SharePoint 2010 December 2011 updates. Um, it works with reports, dashboards, pivot tables, charts. Um, Excel is rendered as HTML in the browser. So it does allow you to have that interactivity, the sorting, et cetera. And I'm going to demo that in just a moment. So it does allow you to have the full view of the Excel web app if users uh, want to do that type of what if analysis in there. Now, there's also an enhancement in SharePoint. There's an add on that you can do Office. It's called Office Web Apps. And if your administrators for SharePoint have this on the server, you may also be able to do some mobile editing. Um, on my demo, I do not have mobile editing. I'm just going to be showing some, some dashboards and how to interact with the dashboards. Again, PowerPivot and Excel services work on many types of devices today. So even on the Nook, I have the, the Nook Android. That's an older operating system, too, of an Android 2.2. That's one of the older operating systems. Uh, we have a Kindle Fire here that works with it. And also um, iPads as well as many other types of devices work with this as well. If you want to play with this, uh, by the way, I know a few other PowerPivot Presentations have talked about uh, Pivot Stream. It's a hosted Power Pivot solution. They do have a demo site. Um, if you go to pivotstream.com, it says cloud hosted demos. If you do want to play around and not necessarily go through setting all this up to see if it's going to work or not, you can hit on some of those demos. Another thing I like about Rob Colley and Teams demos 
is he's done a lot of best practices with using slicers for mobile devices. He also has um, some really nice designs on there as well for mobile devices. Um, some things to think about when using Power Pivot inside of, uh, for, for mobile delivery per se. You're going to want to use more filtering than you are slicers. So slicers take up, again, a lot of screen space. They also can be tricky to do the multiple selects, where if you use a traditional filter, it's much easier to do things like the multiple selects and not leverage a lot of screen space doing that at the same time. Uh, the Power Pivot Gallery inside of SharePoint, where you have the really cool, it's slickery, and you can move the screen. That is a silver light control, and that is not supported in all these different mobile devices. So an easy workaround to this um, that we've been using in the field for a while is just to set that default view for a mobile, uh, mobile device power pivot gallery to all documents. And that's how you can get to those documents and use the document link um, to launch that document in the browser, uh, in a browser that doesn't support Silverlight. So let's take a look at some of these demos. I'm going to get my handy dandy <laughs> iPad again. And in this case here, I'm going to go to my home page. And one thing, if somebody wants to, you can also create a, a, a link right on the home page if they really want to pretend that they have a, a wrapped application here. But what I have right now, what I'm going to be showing you is Excel in the browser. This Excel document is hosted in my, in my personal, I have a personal Office 365 site, King Joy Pen. And I just tossed this document up here. Uh, one thing about Power Pivot, it can be leveraged uh, with if you guys have SAP ERP systems. So this is an example of taking an SAP ERP system report used in Power Pivot and putting it in the browser. So one thing to note here about, uh, about this, it's very, very touch friendly. And one of the frequently asked questions that I get from folks that deploy these types of solutions is they have navigation issues, including myself. I just learned a trick last night, and I've been doing this for six months, you know, these different demos. And I'm like, oh, I didn't realize that. I've been um, really annoyed. But just the navigation themselves, um, you have to be really quick. And see that keyboard popped up. Um, that is one of the things from a best practices standpoint to be wary of. But now it doesn't, so that's really odd. Um, so sometimes that keyboard pops up on me, and sometimes it doesn't when I tap it really quickly. So in this case here, um, you can see there's interactivity right in the browser on the iPad. Um, some, th some other things that I can do when I talk about filtering, sorting, interactivity. So I've got my, st my stock. Maybe I want to take a look at um, where I'm low on stock. Let's see. I can sort it. I can also do things like from a filtering perspective when I talk about filtering. A lot of the different devices as well, um, especially if smaller. So this is a pretty big screen to begin with. Um, so this one's pretty easy. But if I have this on an iPhone, it's really tiny, right? Or some of these other, uh, my Windows phone is very tiny screen. So you make it wider. And this is where these filters really come in handy. So if you're delivering this type of information to folks and they have to do these like, multiple select type things, um, you're going to want to use the filters there. But again, I can hopefully I can shrink this back down and not having a navigation issue. Um, basically, those are some of the examples that you're going to run into. So I'm going to refresh this. Let's go back. So one of the tricks that I just learned was the ability, and this would be something to include in your training of users. So typically, you'll roll out BI, right? And people can usually figure out how to navigate it. Not the case with mobile. And I don't care what devices. Maybe they have them. They own them. They've been playing with them. They won't always figure this out. So do include training within your own uh, mobile device rollouts of mobile BI. So in this case, I just learned that if I press and hold, I won't get that annoying keyboard to pop up. I can just say open or open in a new tab. And that's a much more user-friendly experience. I just figured that out. So sorry, guys, if, for people that have had iPads for a while. I've had an iPad down about six months, and I still just learned that. Um, so just from a usability perspective, those are the types of things you want to keep in mind. Now, for me, I'm a heavy. I always like, oh, oh I'm beating this poor thing. Um, really, the iPad likes very light, soft touches. Um, so again, if I do my sort of sending, 
Um, hopefully that took there. I, I'm getting my interactive sorting and whatnot in the browser. So one thing that I didn't do on this particular power pivot, um, but I typically will do when I'm doing this for real, is I use hyperlinks between the different pages. It's just a hyperlink in Excel. You say insert hyperlink to a place in this document. And I put that navigation on the top because personally, I think that this navigation on the bottom is not user friendly. I like to just simply have it be touch friendly at the top of the page. It's super simple to do and it's supported in most of these devices. It works really, really well. So let me show you yet another device with this on here so you know that it's not just iPad. It is kind of some of these other fun devices. Let's take a look at um, one of these tiny ones. Actually, tell you what, let me show you a simulator because I haven't shown you a simulator yet. So, many, I talked about many of the device manufacturers having simulators. This is one that I found, and this one does not have a Windows Phone simulator. There is a Windows Phone simulator that is available for download, um, but this particular one doesn't, but it does have some other things. So if I want to take a look at the report that I was just taking a look at, um, I can open up, I have my Mobi One Test Center. What I have here is I've got iPhone, iPad, and I've got a few different Android devices that it will simulate for me. And it also toggles between the different views. So I can have it be in portrait or landscape view. So in this case, I have my jQuery, my little jQuery uh, page here. So I can go ahead and launch this. I wanna make sure I'm picking the right one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 03. And this is the one that I know is the 0365 demo. So this is interesting. On the iPhone itself, you're going to get a very different view. So that's good to know that um, it's not necessarily great in that particular view. So let's take a look at um, some of the other views here. Now, the other thing I have noticed is if you go ahead and you do these on your phone themselves, they actually do sometimes work uh, differently. So in that particular demo, when I went into the store, and I used a real iPhone, it actually works really well. Um, so sometimes these emulators can be fairly deceiving and you have to check the different device types. Another way that we can also test is in Safari browsers itself. So there is a menu item called develop and you can target different user agents. So in this case, I can say my user agent, let's see, I thought it was just displaying on the screen for me. Did I just crash it? Yeah, let's start it over. Poor Safari. I just stressed it out. Let's try it one more time. I want you guys to know how to do this too. So if I go to my Safari browser, I can go into develop and I can say user agent and I can go to say iPhone. And you'll automatically see that the device, at least even for the, the Bing search there, has automatically been changed. So I'll go to my, my query here. I'll go to Excel services. And again, you can see the view that it looks like um, in that particular view. <coughs> so going back to the real, the real devices. Let's make sure that's displaying on the screen. So if I go back to the real devices and I go back to my demo, taking a look at what the guys did over at, um, over at PivotStream, I've got my market or my county one here. This is probably a good one here. So what you'll notice and what I've noticed is I can't link directly to these. I actually have to navigate to them. So they're going to make me navigate and authenticate through the browser here. So these are the ones that I said you can play with if you want to show these concepts internally. Um, one of the good ones here is they have an accounting one, and those are good for your finance populations. We also have a retailer competitive uh, analysis. That's a good example with a lot of different data and also with um, using filtering. So I can go in here and I can show you some additional best practices that these guys are doing with Excel services in the browser. So in this case, these guys are doing a nice job uh, from a sliding perspective. We even have regression lines here that they're using here. And they have this embedded in a control 
so that I'm not even having to deal with that web control. They have, um, it's like an Excel services web part that they're leveraging so that they're interfacing this without having that soft keyboard pop up. So that's really fairly nice. Um, they do have a little bit of use of some of the filtering here. So they do have the filter there that they're using. And that's, con and that's controlling this uh, chart over here at the cash flow bridge. So one of the things these guys do a lot is they will have a filter page and they will allow folks to make their selections on the filter page, and then that'll apply to whole analytic workbooks. So if you do have a dashboard design that spans multiple different pages, you could have your business user make all their selections and then easily navigate between all the different screens there. So moving on to the next easy button. So by the way, Excel services, uh, again, that was part of that SharePoint cumulative update. You don't need to do a whole lot of fancy coding or anything to get that to work. Um, you know, getting that mobile device detection, you'll want that to be working. Um, but other than that, that's an easy button deployment. The next easy button deployment, per se, is going to be performance point with the, the SharePoint 2011 cumulative update. So performance point now has the capability within within SharePoint 2010 to do slicing, dicing, drill down uh, within the various iOS devices. And there is a really good blog post that even has this. If you use Project Server in your organization and they have the Project Server reporting, um, EPM Source has done a nice blog article on getting this to work on your mobile devices and getting that particular um, option. And when, talk, when we talk about Microsoft and, and even supporting and embracing all the various mobile technologies that are out there today, Microsoft, here's the link that I have on this deck to TechNet. There is a video done by Microsoft using an iPad on how to navigate and how to be successful on um, the Apple iPad. Some other things that Microsoft is doing, and folks don't realize it, is we're contributing more and more to the open source communities. So some of these frameworks uh, we've been contributing to. jQuery, for instance, we submitted code several years ago to help with device detection for hundreds of different device types. Um, so folks don't realize that you know, we are um, also contributing our IP or our knowledge and help to various open source communities. And jQuery was one of them that we've done that for. So doing a, going ahead and taking a look at dashboarding within, within the devices, let's take a peek at, let's see, we'll flick over again. And I have a peer. I am not political, by the way, so if, there's, if this is politically charged content, I'm going to apologize right here and now. Uh, but I have a peer that has done a very nice dashboard in SharePoint 2010 using uh, budget data and U.S. government data. So I'm going to go ahead and take a peek at what he's got going on here. And hopefully I'm already authenticated from the, the previous session that I have open. If not, we'll take a, we'll take a, a quick look. Um, but basically, let's take a look what we got here. He's just going to ask you to log in. It may already be logged in because I was practicing this before we came in. Um, it already sees that I'm logged in, so I'm going to go ahead and click the interactive dashboard here. So in this case, and I also have noticed we have several different government entities using these as well. So Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools, and there's a few other different government agencies that have to report spend, that have to report publicly how they're um, using citizens' money. Um, they do different public-facing dashboards similar to this one here that has been developed. So what I have. Um, is the ability is I can go ahead and I can change the filters. So there's a filter in performance point that I'm going ahead and updating it. This does have the service pack applied to it. The other thing that I can do is these different KPIs here, they have associated detail reports with them. So I can go ahead, in this case maybe I'm interested in spend, I can pick a different KPI and I can surface an Excel services report on the side and have that also for all these different KPIs show up. In this case, it'll be a chart there. Some other things that I can do in addition to some of these KPIs and the scorecarding is I can launch with the Analyze button we call an analytic chart grid type thing. So in this case here, now I have spend over 90 years of time. You can clearly see World War II right there, uh, the peak that happened uh, and the spend that happened there. 
And then we're seeing a lot of activity recently in here. So in this particular case, I'm interested in outlays. And this is one of the trickier parts here. You've got to touch for two seconds. It's one, two, and then let go. And when you let go, that's when the menu should show up. Let's see if I can figure this out. So it should be one, two, yeah, one, two, and let go. So I think I'm the worst iPad user around. So one, two, let go. It's going to work for me this time. Um, and that's it, and that's what you're going to find. You're going to find executives that are really frustrated, right, with just learning how to navigate. So um, now I want to drill down, and probably would help if I'm not, if I could see what I'm doing here. Um, I'm going to be looking at drilling down, and again, all your business model, remember your kids, your slicey dicey, you have all your different hierarchies here that you can navigate by. This is what you can go ahead and drill down. So I can go into outlay functions, and now I'm going to look at super function. So this is an interactive, I can start to explore this data further. And again, we clearly see, ah, national defense, big shock, right? But what is really interesting to me is this red curve right here. And what is red on here is human resources. So that means government's getting really big and bloated, right? Um, so what do, why is that? Why is government getting big and bloated? So an easier way, if you don't want to slice and dice and get the filtering, is you can, if you want to narrow down in there, I want to narrow down right on this one there. And I want to find out why it's getting big and bloated. So here, I've got another view of this information. Um, I'm interested in kind of that teal line. That's the biggest line there. But I can't see what teal really is here. So in that case, I can actually move my legend to the right so I can figure out what that teal line is. Aha, that's Social Security, big shock. And I'm not political, by the way. This just happens to be a demo that somebody created with, with public data. So there's no political message here at all whatsoever. Um, the other thing that I can do is uh, make stack charts. So maybe it might be easier to see in another view. So hopefully, I think I pushed that button there. Is it refreshing? There we go. I didn't push it hard enough. See? User error. So that's another view, again, of this information. And we can clearly see um, you know, Social Security Security's the green there and just get a feeling for it. And you can stretch these bigger. Um, that's probably what I should have done is stretched them bigger so that I could see. Um, but that gives you a feeling for what you can do on, uh, with that SharePoint cumulative update with some of your dashboarding. So you can do some of this slicey dicey stuff today all capital R's, you can do this today in SharePoint 2010. A lot of folks don't know that you can do any of this uh, today with the different iPads and some of these different devices. So another thing I had mentioned earlier about one of my partners that had a little application um, for mobile devices. They're called um, Mobile Entree. So I'm going to open up their little app. So I, you can see on a tiny screen another way if you did have one of the smaller device types, maybe like a Droid Razor, or, and, you know, that isn't covered in that SharePoint cumulative update, um, how to actually deploy this. So let me take a peek and see if I can't get their stuff on the screen here. And these guys, too, they were one of them. Uh, they were one of the third parties that had a platform for all the lists in SharePoint and whatnot. But they also had BI, and they're the only ones that had BI. Uh, so I thought that was fairly interesting. And I called different vendors, and I asked about the BI. And they just said, oh, no, is there an interest in that? And I said, oh, absolutely. There's absolutely an interest in it. So here, I'm going to put this guy on there. It's kind of small to see. Let's see if I can't zoom in a little bit more. This is very advanced for me to be doing all these gadget things at the same time. So in this case here, this is Mobile Entree. They have uh, tiny different views for uh, dealing with these different devices. And what you'll notice is they do have some of the capabilities that I showed with slicing and dicing on your performance point dashboards. But they have it where it's a little more easier for folks to go ahead and touch. So in this case, this is kind of default out of the box. These are SharePoint lists and a SharePoint page. And depending upon what device I was showing this on, this would lay out differently on the devices. But I can go to reports. And really what I'm going to be showing in reports here is using some of the performance point and also uh, some of the Excel in here. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and pick revenue analysis. And I'm going to drill down from there. Remember 
I was talking about you know, thinking about the speeds and whatnot. I don't know if this is going through right now wireless or if it's actually going through my phone. But I'm going to go through revenue uh, by product. I'm actually interested in t-shirts. And now when you see that little circle going around the screen, it's launching the mobile-friendly version of the BI that they have. So now it's loading the performance point content. Now this one's less political in nature. They, they took a more, more uh, open-friendly topic of baseball. And in this case, now I've got my little mobile uh, performance point report here. And I want to drill down. And to drill down on this one, it's a little different. Let's see if I can touch it from here. You'll notice uh, from a mobile design standpoint, they now have a new menu on the top. And this makes it a little easier, especially for a newbie like me on some of these devices, to go ahead and do the drill down. So now to drill down, I touch on that little box in the corner. And it'll show me the, the drill down options that I have available. So I have the available here to pivot, drill down, drill up, show only. Again, I can do some of my stacked bars and line charts, et cetera. Um, but to see the hierarchies that are available, I'll go ahead and pick drill down to, oops, held too long. So drill down to, and this will give me all the different hierarchy information that I can drill down to. So in this case here, I'm really interested in uh, what, what teams are selling the most t-shirts for me. So who's popular? And in this case, let's take a look. Ah, I happen to know it's, it's New York. Let's see if it'll actually spin for me. <laughs> let's get it to spin and load. Um, but in this case, it's going to be New York has the, the most t-shirts sold. So that gives you a feeling for, oh, we already reset it. But in that case, that gives you another feeling for what's available. That's a third-party offering that's available to do some of the performance point. Um, and where they, where we stop with some of the devices is kind of where they pick up. So reporting services, this is a hot button uh, topic. So basically, this is one of these things I want to make it really clear that it's not necessarily always supported. Um, so this is not always su officially supported if you're not using any third party. However, it might work. And I've got folks doing this in the field. When I told people, well, we don't really officially support that, um, I've had customers show me all these different reports doing. They've got partners doing this, several different partners. Um, so a lot of folks are already doing this, even though it's not technically supported. I can tell you that the calendar control is very tricky, and that may be one that you have an issue with. But a lot of the drop downs seem to work just fine, and some of the other parameters work just fine. Um, so MobiWeave is, if you do need to develop something with reporting services on the back end that is officially supported, you're an ISV or you're somebody that really has to have this work for sure, no matter what, and call somebody if there's a problem. Uh, MobiWeave does support it. And MobiWeave is uh, fairly nice. Basically, they'll allow you to work with um, even your Azure reporting services out on the cloud with some of the older versions of 2005, 2008, 2008 or 2 reporting services as well on iPad, iPhone, and even iPod Touch. Um, so they support a, a variety of different devices there. Another technique that our .NET developers have been using for a while is putting an a report viewer control in, in .NET. And one of the techniques that I've been doing, and I'm going to be showing this in a moment, is that that .NET report viewer, that seems to work pretty well in most of the environments. Now, officially, it's only supported in Safari on Mac OS. But again, sometimes it does indeed work. Um, it just depends on how you navigate. And if you do choose to that direction, again, I use the same trick of doing the navigation and linking on the top versus sending people to different pages. So just to give you a feeling, uh, again, for um, MobiWeave and what they kind of bring to the table on this, they will have better parameter rep control report support for things like calendars, drill down, printing and emailing, um, and bookmarks as well. So I went ahead and I tested and I went to all these different stores and usually people will kick me out or I'll grab somebody. If you saw me at the booth, I was probably like, oh, give me your, give me your device. 
I want to see if it's going to work. Um, I have this site, allupdemos.com, and I put one of these out there to see what works and what doesn't work. And I love getting screenshots. So if you guys have kind of funky devices, maybe somebody that with an Opera Mini, I would love to talk to you and see your device. Um, take a picture of it for me if you can and send it to me. Um, but I want to right here, I've got iPad here, and that works uh, pretty well in iPad. Um, I also have that report viewer control. This is where it gets a little fun. Um, so I went ahead, and again, Android's not officially supported, but uh, it did work for me. Um, again, the, the calendar control didn't, but it worked and rendered just fine, and I could drill through. Nook did not. So Nook has an older Android 2.2 uh, operating system, and that one you can see, it will just have um, kind of a message on the screen, and it's just a blank screen. Um, I've tried a couple different nooks, so even recently I've tried another one, it still wasn't quite working. Blackberry Playbook, another one that we're not necessarily officially supporting, that worked too. Um, so that was fairly interesting. Uh, we also have in here Kindle Fire, so I've got my husband's Kindle. I'll show this live too in a moment here on the Kindle. Some other things that worked and didn't. So. The Windows Phone works great. So a lot of the Windows platform, if you're looking going forward in the future, we're going to be developing the most robust experiences for the Windows 8 and for the Windows phones and for the Windows tablets. You'll have the most robust experience across all the stock of products. Um, so Windows phones, they do indeed work with this as well. Um, let's see what we got here. Blackberry, ah, so Blackberry. I, and I would love to see some more folks with Blackberries too at the booth. Uh, basically, half the time it seems to work and half the time it doesn't. Depends on what type of smart, um, smart browser that you have in that BlackBerry and how new it is. So if you, are you are, if you are developing for BlackBerry, I did not show the Research in Motion emulator, but they do have an emulator as well that is available um, that you can go ahead and emulate and go into the browser and test your different reports. Um, another one I have here is Droid Razor, so that's working again with uh, using that report viewer control. And then I mentioned that some of my, my partners are already doing this. Uh, so what they've got here is Blue Granite has a site, and they also have a very nice mobile academy. So if, it was too, if I went too fast today on how to apply the mobile master page, and you want to take a look at that again, um, obviously you could always download this deck, but you can also take a look at some of the videos Blue Granite has made on optimizing SharePoint BI with mobile devices, because they do have um, a couple different videos on how to set up the infrastructure, how to um, set up the master page, how to make it touch friendly, et cetera. Um, the other thing that you have on the side here, we had to cleanse this, is from one of my real projects with a retailer, is we've made two different views of Report Center. So our default Report Center, we went ahead and we made it full view. And then for iPads, we made it kind of a, a thinner view. And we're using, what we're doing here is we're also dynamically even designing and changing report types. So we're not just doing a push once in this case. Um, a lot of the demos that I've showed you, it's push once, render anywhere. Um, in this particular scenario for this retailer, they wanted some of the reports designed specifically for the different device types. So we were using that redirect with the HTTP module and then pointing iPad users and iPhone users to reporting libraries within SharePoint that have been optimized for that specific device. So let's take a look at this one on some of the different devices. So the first one I'm going to do, and it's kind of tiny, it's on my phone. I'll do it to the side so it makes it a little bit bigger. It's going to take a second to load up here. This is the first one that's using a report viewer control, and it does have the capability to have drill down as well. So what I have here, and I show this a lot, I open up different demos and whatnot, I show this a lot. You can stretch it on the screen. In this case, you know, I'm showing a different alert here. Um, I do have some mapping as well, some geospatial mapping. Um, I can go ahead, I could drill down into the KPI summary if I can click this with my finger. So keep in mind too, um, I actually have small hands and I'm having it hard. I have heard that males with bigger fingers have a harder time. So when you're designing your style sheets, you'll want to put extra padding, it's called padding in CSS, around some of your links for the big fingers, right? Because even I'm struggling with the small fingers. Um, in some of these. So that's kind of an example on the Windows Phone, and that's probably not too shocking because you said, well, you're Microsoft, and it should work on Microsoft stuff. 
So let's take a look on Kindle. And Kindle doesn't have a very fancy operating system. So this is my husband's Kindle. This is an excuse to get him gadgets. So he likes this particular interest of mine. <laughs> oh, did it just break? Oh, my screen just went off. Yeah, so he likes the, oh, that's way far now. At least I know what time it is, right? <laughs> I'll know if I'm running later now. Oh, come on. Why is this thing turning off all the time? I guess you got to be really fast on this. Um, so basically on this one here, and let me go to, ba -ba -ba. oh, one thing too on this one here. Let me tell you this trick too. Let me find my all of demos on here. So this one here. So one of the tricks that I had on this, when I talked about going ahead, let's see, is this warmed up? Let's reload it, make sure it's still connected. Ooh, it looks really good, it's really, really slow here. One of the tricks that I've noticed with this particular device, and this is Kindle. So Kindles are pretty popular, or they were popular on the holidays because they're pretty cheap. Um, one of the things I have noticed is with PDFs on here, that actually downloads to the device. So it doesn't render super nicely, you actually have to go to a separate place, and I'll show that in just a second. Uh, but that was kind of the nuances of this particular device with um, with going ahead and having having a PDF delivery option for for some of the the browser types that don't work really well interactively. So in here, I've got my got my report viewer again. So I'm using the report viewer; it automatically dy dynamically sizes on its own. Um, in this case, I'm using it is a drop down pram. So I touch that a little bit longer. Make it a little bit bigger um, with the special touch. So you can just get a feeling for when I talk about pains with params. <laughs> Those are some of the pains that I'm talking about here. Um, so I can set these different parameters. I could also do drill down. So if I want to go back to that KPI summary, I can go ahead and I can click that and drill down as well. So that does function even on kind of what I would call more of a, a not as mature browser type, because the browser here is not very mature. So the other one that I definitely wanted to show was if you do go ahead for some of these not mature devices, let me go back to my jQuery mobile page. If you do want to download, in this case, so my daily flash report is using the, the cheating technique of going ahead and just going ahead and doing a, a download to a PDF and having a reporting services subscription. Am I squeezing this again? Uh, so it'll tell me it's starting a download. And what it actually did, and this is not user friendly at all. So if you are de delivering to these devices, you gotta push this little button here, go to downloads, and now I can see my report. So at this point here, I can open up my different, rep I can open up the report. Now, the one thing that is nice is this is pretty slickery. It does actually look nice, and I can swipe these PDF. Um, so if I am just doing, you know, from a view perspective, if you do have an older device type that doesn't work really well with, with the rendering on a browser, you still go ahead and, and leverage some of the, the PDF options that have been around for a long, long time. You may be able to work around the, the browser limitations of this specific device that you are using. Um, so that's like another little cheating technique. Um, I could certainly go and show um, more SSRS on different types of, of devices, but I want to move on so you guys can see some of the some of the other options that are available for extending it. So third parties, there are a boatload of third parties available. I showed you a little bit of mobile entree. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a quick peek of extended results. We also have a part, uh, um, an option called Roam BI. This one seems to be really popular but it's really limited. So I love the way it looks and feels, but it only works with iPads and iPhones. I thought they were gonna be doing BlackBerry, but I'm not sure if they are. Um, and again, if you think about around the world, iPhones and iPads may be really popular in the United States, maybe not necessarily in India, or maybe not necessarily in Asia, and some of these other, if you're a global developer, you need to think globally um, and be aware of all the different device types. So that's where, so where another group like Mobile Entree or Extended Results really has an advantage because they do so many more devices that they support. Um, there's other ones that are available. So we have our traditional .NET vendors. Component Art has a beautiful offering, and I'm gonna be showing what they have. Now it is very pricey, and it is more traditional 
um, app dev. I don't think of it as a, as a BI developer in the sense of um, a BI developer. So that's going to be more of a, a true .NET type app. So let's take a peek at some of these guys' options that are available. And the first one that I'm going to show, let's make sure my zoom's not too, too far up now. So the first, the first one I'm going to show is uh, Push BI. So Push BI allows you to leverage uh, the, the existing performance point content that you have, your reporting services content. They have a feed type operate, uh, a feed. It's an IIS application and will feed the, this particular application, the values. So in this case, they've done a really nice job. Remember I talked about what is important and what is the best practice in BI of using KPIs and indicators. These guys do a phenomenal job of best practice design for mobile devices. So in this case, we have all our KPIs. I can see this as an executive on a glance. Um, they also feed this into um, Outlook so that a lot of folks can drive and look at Outlook as well. So there's interactivity there as well. But what they've done here, um, they allow you to, if they want, you want to make these bigger, you can zoom in on them. You can switch the different, if it's a line, it's a column. Uh, remember we talked about what other things are important is adding ability to add comments. So these guys have the ability to add comments um, and just easily be able to navigate, take a look. Maybe you don't want those thresholds. You can toggle them off. So it's very, very touch friendly. And they've done a pretty good job of that. They also allow you to do, uh, um, and this is the part where it seems more like a bunch of pointers to me to external applications. So you could do this probably even prettier than they're doing it uh, with, the, with the technique that I opened up today with doing your responsive design and using images of the reports, maybe a prettier way to do that. And that's all these guys are really doing here um, is that type of design. Another vendor that I have on here, so here's the Rombi. Again, these guys also doing the, um, the KPI best practice. I don't happen to think this is immensely user friendly. It does look slick as ever, though. Um, so I can go ahead and pick different ones, and then I can drill down. Real similar, you'll notice a pattern. And one thing I tell the other folks is when you're designing your BI, you can take some of these best practices. Take a look at what these guys have done. And you can do this yourselves, too, um, and just design your reports this way. Um, it's just a matter of taking these ideas or taking some of the lessons learned and applying them to your own environment. So these guys kind of have a slickery look and feel. Um, it is, again, limited to the device types that it supports. Um, but it does actually support even Power Pivot data source feeds. So if you are using Power Pivot in your organization, you can um, interface and leverage this. The other one that I mentioned, and let's take a peek at those guys, is Component Art. So these guys, and I'm not sure if it's even going to look as pretty as it does um, on the screen, but it's very interactive. Um, they've done a really nice job from the, the controls and components that you can scan over time periods, very touch friendly. Um, they do have a develop once and then push everywhere type platform. It's also interactive. So if I go ahead and touch on something, um, you can go, it can go ahead and uh, render and drill downs, et cetera. So if you are a true application developer and you're developing an application to go globally, um, this, this may be an option for you. Uh, from a third-party perspective. Let's take a look at who else I have on here. So some other ones that I have on here. Is Transparent. So remember I talked about power companies also having their own um, their, their own specific, and they've been kind of far along with this because they've been using devices in the field for a long time. If you are a power company, you have very large data sources. This company, Transpara, has a very nice, again, here we're seeing the same kind of KPI views. Um, I'm not as crazy about this particular view. I like the bar view better. Um, but these guys also have, uh, they work with a lot of different data source types, big data types, um, and they're delivering this to a wide variety of mobile devices today. So that's kind of a snapshot of a few of the different um, options that you have available. Um, some other things that you can do if you are doing more of your traditional, let's take a look at my, my jQuery page again. So 
Some other things that you can do is you can also use web parts within SharePoint with JavaScript charts. And this works well, too, for Office 365. So Office 365 and on-premise, on-premise, they're, they're beginning to come together, but they're not quite together yet, right? So you may want to be doing some things, or your business users may wanting to be doing some things. And they can certainly use Excel services, like I talked about earlier. Um, they can also leverage, if they have the skill to do this, um, some of the charting capabilities. So Fusion Charts has an HTML5 charting uh, mechanism. It's fairly low cost, but it is you can touch it. It will automatically filter everything else on the page. Um, so those guys do a pretty nice job. If I go back and I look at some of the other ones that are out there, JavaScript Charts. Now this one um, seemed to work on the most device types. It wasn't as interactive. Like I can't really push and scale it as well as some of the other ones. Um, but it does work across most of the different devices. Oops, I guess that doesn't look good for you. It looks great for me, though. <laughs> One of the, I love to pick the hardest things to demo. Um, so yeah, so these guys seem to do a really good job. I think they're, uh, they're very low cost. It was uh, like under $100 type thing. Um, and you can certainly leverage them if you get, I'm just using the free one, so I have their little logo here. But um, if you do want to play around with this and you have Office 365, you can play with that as well. The other one here is I've talked about jQuery all day. Um, these guys have a really, if you really want to go ahead and even create a, a real mobile application and push it out to what's called um, PhoneGap. So you can use my HTML5 in that jQuery page. You can wrap, put a wrapper on that and throw that up into something called PhoneGap. PhoneGap will send it to the different app stores and you can start packaging up your application and go through. Remember I talked about the shrink wrap at the beginning. If you really want to do that, um, there are ways that you can still leverage. It's called a hybrid uh, mobile application to, to publish these up as well. And if you go that route, uh, one of the better charting options out there for working with jQuery is jQuery charts. So hopefully I can get this guy to render really quickly um, and then show you guys tablets in a moment. So these guys here have a really nice mobile jQuery charting framework that works um, in SharePoint as well if you're leveraging some of, some of the mobile libraries that I was talking about earlier. And they have more interactivity, et cetera, on their different devices. So beginning to wrap up here. Last but not least, so I feel bad. I had Windows tablets right in the front. So for all the Windows lovers in here, I was actually forced to put this in the back. Why, I have no idea. It seems really backwards. But Windows tablets uh, and the Windows 8 waves, they're coming a long way. And I really love some of the stuff that I'm seeing from a, from a BI perspective on here. So some things to note about Windows tablets is that you can leverage different 32-bit applications on them. They're fully functional today. You can upgrade it versus sell it. Like with my, this guy here, this I'm going to have to sell it. It's, as soon as the next thing comes out that I really want to have. Um, there's really no upgrade process for it. And we do have stores for these. It's kind of Microsoft's best kept secret is, the, is these tablets, and, and now we even have retail stores. Um, there is a consumer preview that's been available. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on that because I want to show you this. Um, but it does give you a no compromise experience. So this has been designed with business usage in mind, not, and consumer as well as business usage. So this one here. So hopefully, I have, and I have Windows 8 on here, so hopefully here, I'll be able to log in quickly. I don't want to share my, my super secret password here. I have to do it wrong here. I gotta actually have it down. Oh, the other thing, by the way, with Windows tablets is you don't have to do anything special to get them to work at work. Um, so a lot of times, for a lot of these mobile device types, you have to literally have special authentication, etc., for them. So here I even have. So you know, we can support Silverlight in here. I have one of those PowerView reports, right, that we've been showing this week. So you can even use PowerView reports because it, it supports Silverlight. So all that interactivity that we showed earlier, being able to, to interact with data, that's absolutely supported on, on the different Windows devices here. Um, some other things that are 
here. So if I take a look at Windows tablets in general, we do have an app store. So um, if you do want to package up your mobile BI and have them, it's very zippy. I don't know if you can tell how fast it is. Um, it's not like anything I've seen before traditionally from Microsoft from a speed perspective. Some other things here that we've got, I'd like to show this particular app and hopefully it will behave for me, but I want to start it from scratch. Is If you do get a tablet and you want to take a look at one of the apps that's on here that does a really good job, and maybe this one's going to bomb on me, but we're just about ended anyway, um, is the Bing Finance app. It doesn't look like it's going to, it wants to show for me right now. Maybe, oh, because I'm probably not connected. Um, but there is, it's called the Bing Finance app, and the Bing Finance app it gives you kind of a preview of development for Windows and Windows 8 on mobile devices in the future. It uses, um, it's like an XMLA type framework, or it's called, I think it's called the WWA framework to do some of the development on, on tablet devices. So thanks for coming to my session today. Again, my name is Jen Underwood. I have my contact information here. Again, if you have really fun different devices and you start playing with some of the public links that I've provided so that you can play with the mobile BI, please send some pictures to me and comments to me on there. I also have a blog, www.jenunderwood.com. I usually do a pretty good job of sharing with folks in the community whenever there's updates. Um, it's very BI-centric versus maybe SharePoint-centric, but I have been getting more and more SharePoint material on there. Um, I also have uh, a tweet. It's called I Dig Data. So thanks, everybody.